pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Becky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. I appreciate the support. We back, man. We back in the lab. We back in the lab, man. Uh, been gone. Been taking care of some business. Trying to elevate this platform. Trying to get us to the next level. You know, and uh, get this message out there, man. Like I tell y'all all the time, man. This a marathon. It's not a sprint. So y'all bear with me, man. Rock with me. Roll with me. Let's get it. Let's go. 2024. That's our year. We're going to do everything we can to get this thing on the, uh, to the next level. Uh, 100K. I told y'all I put an open challenge out to TBP Nation. Get three people to sub today. Three people. That's all. Get three people to sub today. We'll be at 100K tomorrow. So TBP Nation, man, stand up. Let's go. Let's get it. If you like it, they probably love it, you know. So let's do it, man. Let's make this thing happen, man. In 2024, let's go get them. Um, big love to everybody who's been supporting this platform, everybody who's been supporting this movement. Um, big love to everybody who just shows support in general, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all, everybody who comes in that morning mud, everybody who locks in at 6, who like, comment, share, and subscribe. I love y'all. Everybody who comes in the late night Twitch, uh, Watch me on TikTok, uh, Instagram. Big love to each and every one of y'all, man. Um, we're going to be posting more on Pure Delicious, more on Banky Pound Prison uh, Fitness. We're we going all the way out in 2024, man. I just need y'all to hold on, ride with me. Let's go. Grab a seat. Yeah, put your positive head on, man, and come in there and just enjoy yourself, man. Learn something. If you don't get nothing out of the videos, it may help somebody that you know. Give it to who needs it. But um, make no mistake about it. There's always a message in it, man. And the message is that we want to stay free. We want to uh, raise healthy uh, kings and queens and let them go out here and reach their potential. And don't cut it short by making bad mistakes and bad decisions, man. So big love to everybody who out there who support me and support the movement. It's not me. It's us. TBP Nation. Stand up, man. Salute. Uh, today, man, I wanted to talk about this, man. It just was on my mind, but I know since I've been out myself, um, three and a half years, it's like, uh, it's a new thing out here, man. It wasn't a thing before I went in, man. It was called, it's called scamming. Scamming. They got scammers out here, man. People who run a game, man, you know, we call it in there, it's that skull duggery, you know, <laughs> it's that straight skull duggery. But people out here running scams, man, and little, you know, uh, trickeration and stuff like that to get you, separate you from your money, you from what you've earned, you for what you work for, those type of people, man, the scammers, man. But they have them scammers in prison, too. I know right, mm, I ain't going to say right before I left, a couple of years ago before I did make parole, Man, it was a big thing in there, man. They had them dudes in there scamming, man. They was scamming, going crazy with this uh, um, income tax. You know, they were scamming with this income tax hard, man. And um, I didn't understand it, you know, because I had been locked up so long. So I didn't understand what was going on until I got the gist of it and, 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 and you know, did, did a little knowledge to it. So what they was doing was you had a couple of dudes that was going around, man. They was asking dudes for their Social Security number. Right, dudes was volunteerly giving them their social security number, you know, because the thing was they said if they get your social security number, they can file some income tax for you and get you some money back, you know, even though you ain't worked nowhere, you ain't been nowhere. So, however, the scam go on the other end, I'm not, you know, privy to, I don't understand it, but it was a fact that if you gave these dudes your social security number, they was telling you they're gonna get you like $200, right? And my Sally. The one that I said, the worst selly I ever had, he was doing it. Him and his peoples, you know, they was doing it. Um, it was another dude, a black dude, I can't think of his name, but they were saying he was doing it all over. Everywhere he went, every compound he do, that was his hustle. That's how he got on. 
he'd get that and, and get dude's social security number. He had somebody on the street that he was working with. They'd wait a little while, man, and they'd get this money. So dudes was paying these dudes, man, you know, off the rip, $100, $50 or something like that. So in your mind, you're thinking, I give him $50, I give him $100 or whatever, he going to give me, you know, all of this income tax money to come back to go on my books. But they was taking money in commissary, you know, so you might have $100, you might have $50 in commissary, but you may not have had that money on the books. You might be a penitentiary hustler. You might know how to go out there and run a poker game, do this, do that. Some dudes were saying they get you 400 It depends on, you know what I'm saying, whatever whatever they had going on, it was either 400 or 200 they could get you. And it depends on your circumstances or whatever. But they were saying, like, I get you 200 then, and, and six months later, I get you 200 more. So in essence, you was getting 400 Or they'll say, I get you 400 then, 400 later. It depends on how much you paid them. If you gave them 50, you could get the uh the 200 package two times, that's 400 dollars If you gave them 100, you get the 400 package two times, that's 800 dollars So you gotta put it in perspective. You gotta look at it like a dude in prison, he ain't got that much money. 400 dollars in prison is a lot of money. I'm telling you that right now. That's a lot of money. And 800 dollars is even a lot more money. So dudes was taking that deal. Especially you got dudes that had, you know, long sentences, 20 years, 30 years, life sentences or whatever. Okay, so this is the scam that they was running. Whoever they had working with them on the outside, whatever type of information they put in, it was working. You know, and dude was moving around, they was doing, and they came to the point that black dude, they knew he was doing it. But they couldn't do nothing to him. He had life sentence. They, what can they do to him? You know, he... Is really fraud or whatever you want to call it. That's what he was doing, and that's how he made his money. He always was eating in there because people always had him there. The, the, the problem come in like if whoever they working with on the street don't send that money, and then this dude gave this money, and then you obligated to get him this, that, and third. You're not gonna be able to get that money back. If he gave you fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, and supposed to get this, you can't say, "Oh man, the people ain't doing so." Huh? Hang your hundred back. Nah, because he gonna feel like you took his money used it, you you was down out on your luck, then you got in better times, and then you're trying to get the money back, but he ain't make nothing. That's where the violence going to come in. That's where you're going to get bust up at. And that's, probably, that's, that's what ended up happening to him. He did it to somebody, and then whatever was going on, he got towed off, or he couldn't get that money, and dudes was down on him. He had like 12, 13 dudes in the block that was like, where my money at? <laughs> where my money at? And he... He running around trying to duck it, man. My people on the street, they got it, man. Well, who these dudes and waited patiently, you know, 30 days, 60 days, whatever it may be. They had something called, uh, man, what was that gym called? Uh, rap, rapid refund or something, like telling them, some dudes here tell you, you going to get your money in, in, in 30, 40 days, right? So dudes was not getting their money, and they was down. They was on his top. He was scared to death. He was trying to get away. I could see. I can see the check-in move coming. You know what I'm saying? They was on them every day. Dudes was out there. And some of them dudes was snatching. Some of them was going to hurt them. Showing up. He knew it. Right? So he goes outside one day. This after the pressure done been on him for about a week or two. He done got away for a long time. The only reason he ain't got hurt so far, because dudes wanted that money. But if they figured out that they weren't going to get that money, you can best believe the violence was coming. He was going to get he was gonna get got. So he get to arguing with another dude. He was a scary dude, this, this black dude. I'm telling you, he was scary, a little short, chubby dude. He was scary. He ain't had no fight in him. He just had con in him. He had that skullduggery, that larceny. He knew how to get some money. So he goes outside when they get to arguing with this other dude that's just as scary, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> So we on the way back in the building and we going back to the cell and they argue, they argue. So he know the police right there. He pop off on the dude, try to fight the dude because he wanted to go to jail because he knew that heat was coming. So he fight the dude. He swing on the dude. The dude swing back. They get to fight. Man, you could have put this fight on America's Funniest Videos. They Neither one of them know how to fight. One of them scared. The other one glad of it. They... <laughs> You know, swing and man, it just it was it was hysterical, and dudes was ready to jump in it too. But by now, the people didn't seen it. They didn't draw the guns down on us, telling us to get on the ground or whatever. But other dudes was ready to run, jump on them, and hurt them because they know you trying to get away, and they don't want you to get away without feeling that pain, 
without leaking some blood, without being able to inflict some of this brutality on you for playing these games. And um, he ended up getting away, man, because the fight that they, them two jokers had, that was like, you know, some kid stuff. You know, but both of them get took out their handcuffs, this, that, and the third. I don't know. He might have set it up. <laughs> you know, you never you never can tell in there when them dudes is under, under pressure. They under pressure. They, you know, they'll come up with anything. But they got him up out of there, man. And um, dudes were sending notes to him back there in the hole. Telling them, man, you better get that money. You either going to get that money or don't come back out here because we got something for you. You know, and he was scared to come back out. He never ended up coming back out. He went to another camp. I remember when I ended up getting transferred, I was hearing about him. His name ringing all over the every institution because this is what he do on every institution. He run this scam. I can get you some money. Now, you got to understand, out here on the street, dudes is looking at the importance of a Social Security you number. Know? You don't want to mess your credit up. You don't want to have this on your name. You don't want to get charged with fraud, this, that, and the third. But what y'all don't understand, if you locked up, and no money comes to you directly in your name for uh, filing income tax, they can't do nothing to you. Your excuse is secure. Your alibi is locked in. Man, I'm locked up. How could I file income tax? And why would you send it to me knowing I'm locked up and knowing I ain't work nowhere? So, and there's nothing on the records that shows that I got a, a income tax check that they had to, you know, put it on my books. It, they, 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 they clear. You know what I'm saying? They super clear. So the the, the, the con in there was 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 a major man because the way they ran it to you was like you can't get in trouble. Your credit can't get messed up. Even if you getting out, it, it, you know you could go to the people and say I was locked up. I ain't never filed income tax. Blah 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 blah. So that's what the con was, and that's how he was selling it. And dudes was buying it. Now me being a paranoid joker that I am, I ain't want no parts of it. It just ain't sound right to me. You know what I'm saying? And then dudes don't really pull up on me with that type of foolishness. My my Bama Selly ended up asking me, telling me it was legit because he was doing the same thing. He was doing the same thing. He was doing it with his mama. You know what I'm saying? So obviously they lost and they running in the family. But I ain't want no pasta, so I ain't never do it myself. But dudes was doing it, man, because like I say, it was an opportunity that they couldn't miss. Now every part that this joker went in, the black dude and my set, the part, the, the, the economy and the part just went up. Because now everybody was doing it, so everybody had money. So the commissary was flowing good. Dudes gambling against each other. All the poker tables filled up. Because everybody got money. Everybody got a couple of hundred dollars. I'm telling y'all, a couple of hundred dollars goes a long way in prison. So everybody got money. You know, everybody buying this. Somebody can come up with some weed. Everybody, they're going to sell out. Everything was going on. It, it was just jumping during this time. When, when dude come in the block because he, he going around, look, man, you know, yeah, yeah, income tax money, man, y'all trying to get this, man, just give me your social security number. Woo, woo. The whole thing that people weren't looking at was the, the, the bigger picture. If you were getting out, even if you couldn't be held liable, you, it would still hold you up. It would still, you know, mess you up. Then also when you did get out and you start working or doing whatever and you, you, you straight legit or whatever, these people still have your social security number. These people still filing your taxes and getting all of the money now in your name. And they won't recognize that once you gave it to them, even if they did that and gave you the money twice, 200 now, 200 a couple of months later, then that's it. They still have it. They're going to be doing it next year, the year after that, the year, and you're not even going to be around them. So they're going to continue to get money in your name. This is what the con was. This is what the whole scam was. But dudes weren't thinking of that. They was thinking about the moment. They was thinking about what they need. They was thinking about they ain't had no money on their books. They ain't had no support from the street. They ain't had nobody doing nothing for them. And dudes was biting, man. They was eating it up. You know what I'm saying? They was eating it up. Like I said, the only problem came in was when them people couldn't produce that money. When they didn't produce that money for whatever reason, then... It was a problem because dudes them paid you up front. That's how prison is. Dudes want the money. Money on the wood make the gambling good. You know, money out of sight calls a fight. So, man, this was a major thing in there. And the black dude, like I said, I can't remember this joker name, but they knew he was doing it. The administration knew he was doing it. They say he had did it on several institutions and they lock him up for it, but they got to let him out. What, what's going? They can't give them a charge for it because it's some street stuff. 
But even if the feds or whoever was on him, they couldn't do nothing to him because he had, you know, life and he won't get out and he obviously won't won't stop. Their better pursuit was to try to pursue whoever was doing it for him on the street and catch them. But man, they had this thing down to a science, man. And um, dudes was just eating it up, man. They was getting all this money and swear to God they was doing something. But it was only temporary. It only lasts for a couple of months. And then you broke again. But not realizing these dudes going to be using your social security number for the rest of their life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is the type of con and schemes that be going on in prison, man. I'm telling y'all, man, these dudes in there, they intricate. They on it. They on it. Yeah, they on it, man. They on more than people think they on. These guys got nothing to do but sit in there and think. You have some very, very intelligent dudes in there. You got some dudes in there that's, that, you know, they think beyond outside the box, man. They going to find a way to get some money no matter where they at, no matter what the conditions is, no matter what's going on. And this was one of their cons, but I seen it. I seen it from the beginning. And um, I ain't want no parts of it. And I was always taught when I was young, man, you can't let nobody get your social security number. Don't get nobody in because they could do so much with it, you know. And a lot of, and I know some dudes since I've been out, they got out and said they had to go get their credit fixed and had to go through all of this paperwork because they did this, this in prison. Let somebody do it. But the money that was put on your books going to be put on your books from somebody that whoever you, you paid to do this to. They just gonna send you a money order. It ain't it ain't like it come from the government. It ain't like it saying it's an income tax check. It ain't none of that. So there's no proof that you did anything wrong. You know? And then you had some dudes in there, man, man, listen, these dudes was paying people that work in the office or in the administration to get dudes social security you number. Know? And they was doing it without you even knowing it. This caused a major problem. Because you had people that was contacting people, people on the street talking about this tax stuff, and this is you filed taxes and you locked up, or people was contacting people that was locked up, and they were like, I don't know nothing about it. So the dudes that was doing it, people knew who was doing it, and dudes was down on them, whether they did theirs or not. Dudes was down on them, man. I seen dude catch the one dude that was doing it too, and just beat the brakes off of him, whether he had did it or not. He just took off on him as soon as he seen him. I'm talking about crushed him. <laughs> straight crushed him because he felt like he was the one who did him because he was the one that was known to be doing it. But, man, they, they was getting money in there, man. I mean, real live money. And to my understanding, when this PPB or whatever you call it type of stuff came out, man, I know dudes literally in there that got, they done got $100,000 money. $100,000 money running scams, man, about the PPP loans and putting them in and getting people in there to use their social security number and putting this stuff in and filing this, filing that. And they just giving the people on the street a cut of this money and they getting a bulk of this money and they setting up in the penitentiary now with all types of money on their books because th this is the scam. This is the scam, man. It's universal. A lot of things that go on on the street, people going to get hip to in the penitentiary and they going to be able to find a loophole and alter it and get in where they fit in. And, and, and this goes on in there all the time. And money is a, is, is a major component of violence in there. If you owe somebody a dime in there, you better pay them. You better pay them, man, because the, 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 the key is you can't let nobody take nothing from you. So if you let somebody take a dime from you, man, it's punishable by violence. You cannot let it happen. So, because it's going to spread. And then once somebody take a dime from you, the next person is going to take a dollar. The next person is going to take a hundred. The next person is going to take a thousand. The next person is going to take everything you got. When he take everything he got, then what you got left? You got you. Then he might want to take you too. Real talk. That's how prison is. It's dog eat dog. You know, only the strong survive, man. You show any signs of weakness, man, you're going to be bombarded with, with all types of loss and then Tom Fooler. But but that that game right there, they was scamming and they was scamming, man, and they was they was doing their thing, man. I mean, they was getting money hand over fist. You seen dudes that ain't never had no money on their books, they ain't never uh, had nobody send them anything. And next thing you know, they got money. They going to commissary. They gambling. They buying uh, tobacco. They buying weed. They buying all this. Like where you get some money, man? You did the um tax thing. No, I ain't do it. Dudes be lying, acting like they ain't do it because they feel embarrassed knowing that they didn't get their social security number out. 
Because you had other people walking around saying, man, don't get them social security no more, man. Them people won't be able to use your stuff all the time. They ain't going to tell you when they use it. And then dudes start realizing that, hey, I done messed up. I done messed up. I shouldn't have gave it to them. So they, dudes are lying, say they ain't do it, but they did it. It was easy to tell. You could look at the part. You could look at the part. It, it, this part, this point in time of the part, man, you'll see dudes always broke. Ain't no money flowing. Ain't no real live gambling going on. Only people gambling is the ones who already been gambling. it always be a small net group. Them the dudes that got a little money trying to win each other's money. Then all of a sudden, a couple of months later, everybody gambling. Everybody going to commissary. <laughs> everybody got money to spend. Because dude moved in the block and he doing, the, he doing these, these scams. He running his game. He putting it down. And dudes would go from block to block. Once they done got this block, they'll stay in here for a while. They'll cuss the police out, do something to get moved, put a request in to get moved, go to another block, repeat the process, go to another, till they done went over the whole compound. And they done made literally thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, man. Thousands. At the cost of them getting towed off, though. At the cost of them getting hurt by somebody who... Ain't get their money. Somebody who ain't get their money in time. Somebody who thought realized that they made a mistake. They could turn around on you then and, and inflict pain on you because they feel like, nah, man, you know, your people, man, if, if, if I run into you again on another compound and I found out that they done use my social security number, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that. That's how dudes was going at them because dudes realized after the fact that they messed up. And that's how dudes, the dudes that was doing them things was having problems because every compound they go on there, somebody down on them. Somebody down on them. Somebody got, you know, want to do something to them. But these dudes would not stop, man, because the money was so great and, and, and the car was so easy to them with whoever they was working with on the street. It was just easy money. Easy money. And you talking about easy money in prison? Shh. Where everything costs... <laughs> Well, you got to pay for everything. Ain't nobody giving you nothing. So it, it it was crazy, man. It was crazy for a while. I'm glad I ducked that hook. I ducked that hook, man. I'm glad I knew how to hustle. I knew how to get money. I knew how to have my own. That I didn't have to resort to that. I would like to think I wouldn't resort to it even if I was broke. But who knows? You know what I'm saying? I can't answer that because I won't in that position. But, man, it was, it, it was wicked in there for a while, man. It was wicked. And then once certain people knew that dudes was doing it, other people was trying to do it. So you had all types of dudes saying, man, I can get you 500 No, he said he can get you four. I can get you five. I can get you five twice. That's $1,000. Now, you're talking about $1,000 in prison for a joker that ain't got nothing? Shh. Hey, man, and dudes was cutting deals. Dudes be hungry. They ain't got nothing. They the, some of the dudes that was doing it, they, they'll mess their money off. They'll jack their money off. They'll go to the poker table, lose all their money. They'll go uh, play a whole lot of parlays and blow their money. They'll send money to girls on the street to try to get them to come see them, try to impress the girl. Oh, I'll pay your rent. Dudes was paying, uh, <laughs> dudes was playing, paying girls rent on the street just to get them to come see them. Because they ain't had nobody. That's what the, the black dude was doing. He he meet man introduce me to somebody, man. I do your I do your loan for you, man, and everything. Else. Introduce me to a girl. You ain't even got to pay me. Cause he was that star for affection. So he getting so much money from the streets and from his flim flammery that he could send and pay girls rent. You pay <laughs> you pay a girl rent. She coming to see. <laughs> you can lay flat and believe that. So and you paying rent from the penitentiary. And he got towed off a couple of times because dudes was running reverse the backstab. They were running the backstabbing game on him. Okay, do my tax for free. I'm going to hook you up with this girl. Boom, hook him up with the girl. Boom, boom, boom. Sick the girl on The girl run game on him. He send the girl the money to pay her rent. She said, well, I can't get up there this week. He said, pay her rent again. And then the girl goes. And then they'll take the money and gap the money they sell. He was falling for that. Because, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Fair exchange ain't no robbery. Dudes had started conning them dudes by sicking girls on them, the ones that was always trying to get a girl. Sick the girl on them, and they made them a couple of thousands of dollars. So, man, it's it's a wicked world, man. It's a wicked world, man. I ducked all them hooks. I ain't going to get involved in none of that. But, man, it was going on, and it just got worse and worse before I got out. This was a couple of years before I got out. All the way to the time I got out. It was still going. 
you know, I, uh, uh, I wasn't in there doing the PPB jump, but I had no dudes in there, and they told me it was just insane. Every block is balling. Every block gambling. Every block got money flowing around. Dudes that get drugs getting paid off the top because everybody got money to buy. Everybody. Because all of the money was floating around in the penitentiary. But none of that money couldn't buy nobody out the penitentiary. None of that money couldn't buy you out the penitentiary. You still was in there. You still had to do that time. But um, the scam in penitentiary is real. It's just as real as it is out here. The scam artist is real in penitentiary. Please believe it, man. They Everything that goes on out here, they're going to find a way to get a piece of it in there. It may not be to the extreme that it is out here, but they're going to find a way to get a piece of it, man. Because you have dudes that that, that intelligent in the penitentiary, they just putting the energy of their intellect in the wrong, you know, in the wrong area, in the wrong direction. But they got them dudes in there that can think on that type of level, man. And, um, yeah, they was killing them. And then what's the penalty? You're doing life under the new law. You ain't never getting out. What they going to do? Come bring you a couple of fraud charges and give you some more time. You never go into the street anyway. It don't hurt them. So what's the remedy to that? How can you stop them? How can you scam? How can you... You know, prevent them from doing it. You can't leave them locked up all the time. You got to get out in the population. Whenever they out in the population, they moving around. They getting security, social security numbers, and they filing taxes. <laughs> Straight like that. They filing taxes, and they getting money. You know, uh, it's crazy. Then you had some administration, if they know you was doing it, they'll freeze your money on the books. You couldn't spend it. Say it's under investigation. So you can have 10, 20, 30,000 on your book. You cannot spend it because they got you under investigation. They found a way around that. They get a sale partner, put the money on his books. They get they put the money on their homeboy books. Let their homeboy go to commissary for them. Let their homeboy send money out for them, money orders out for them. They're going to find a way, man. They're going to find a way. Please believe me. I sat right there and watched them, man. But, yeah, man, just to let you know, man, the scams don't just happen out here. They happen in prison as well. They scamming in prison as well. Please believe for big bucks. <laughs> for big bucks, no whammies, you know, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all, man, let y'all know this is the life of the penitentiary, man, this is the life that you can live if you choose to raise your hand and get out here and get to acting foolish and doing crazy stuff, and you saying, I won't go to penitentiary too, because I'm going to try this, I'm going to take, take a shot, I'm going to do, this is life that's waiting for you, and at the end of this, man, at the end of this, it always ends in violence, it always ends in violence, man, because once that money get messed up, somebody gonna get messed up with it. It's just that simple. And you cannot count on nobody on the street. Somebody on the street getting so much money that they may get scared because they ain't locked up. They putting their life on the line too. If they feel like the heat coming down there, cut everything off. And they cut everything off, that's gonna lead the dude that's running this game in the penitentiary stuck. He still gotta pay all these guys because they still want their money. So, dangerous game, but it's a game that's ran every day in the penitentiary, man. Just one of them. So, uh, anyway, man, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Did y'all know dudes in there was getting down like that? Did y'all know dudes in there could get down like that? Just let me know in the comments, man. Like I said, it's a blessing in every lesson. And the blessing is, oh, boy, I ain't raise his hand. I ain't want no boss of it. <laughs> no sir, Bob. And I'm glad I didn't. It was just my instincts. Just my instincts. Yeah, the only thing that kept me safe, man, it won't know nothing special. Nothing crazy was just my instincts that told me this ain't going to end well. So, you know, blessings for that, man. But anyway, man, y'all talk to me in the comments. I talk back. TBP Nation, we on the rise in 2024, man. Let's go. Let's get it. Three subscribers, man. I challenge each and every one of y'all, man, that uh, is subscribed to go get three more, man. Let's get over to 100K, man. Let's get to it. Let's get to it in 2024. Big love, TBP Nation. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. And boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, man. They scamming everywhere, even in the penitentiary. out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.